What is the first lesson in Bhagavad Gita? Spiritual life, what is ABCD? First lesson. Which, which? Difference between body and soul. Like you go in a kindergarten. If you are not able to learn A, B, C, D properly, would you be able to go further? Similarly in spiritual life, if this simple concept is not understood, you will mix the requirement of body with the requirement of soul and body is not one. They are two things, different things. One is material entity, other is spiritual entity. One has material requirement, other has spiritual, spiritual, spiritual requirement. The uh, requirement and I gave an example, like one chariot example we had given and I had given an example of a car and a driver. The driver is there inside the car, that's why the car is able to move. Without that, the car cannot run. Similarly, we are inside the body. That's why the body is function. The moment we come out or leave this body, what is the value of this body? How many will appreciate this body? Nobody appreciates. Stinking smell comes. What comes? Right? So we are there. That's why the body is moving. And what else we discussed? How common sense, you know, what was the common sense principle which we gave yesterday? What is the principle to understand soul? The things that belongs to you, you are not that. Very important principle to understand. Whatever belongs to me, I am not that. So then we started discussing. So what was the discussion happened? How did the discussion happen? Yeah. If you are the whole body. Yeah. Even yeah. If you are the whole body, you are not that. So, yeah. Uh, you started with a pen, leg to legs, each every, uh, each and every body part, and finally like the entire body. Yes. Which is also we got to accept that we are not that. Yes. And we are the soul. Very nice. Very nice. So one by one we try to simply distinguish ourselves from, uh, you know, the body. Uh, we have to understand and we came to a conclusion that body belongs to me but I am not the, I am not the body. Then I am what? Spirit soul. And when is the time we speak about spirit soul? Normally at the time of, you can keep it down, normally at the time of death, we don't speak before that, right? What else which we discussed? No, before that we discussed proof of soul, show me the soul, then how we, how we, what was the proof of soul? Air we cannot see, then mind, intelligence, false ego. It has to be perceived, it has to be understood in a different way. It cannot be understood just by gross way. Yes. Similarly, what is the proof of soul? Livingness, consciousness. If I hit this, it will react. But if I hit Prabhuji? it will immediately react. Why? Because he is cautious. So consciousness is the proof of the soul. When a person dies, how hard I hit him, he will react. Why? Because there is no consciousness. So consciousness, livingness itself is the proof for the soul. And what other proofs which we discussed about soul? Other proofs, like near-death experience, we talked about something. We talked about reincarnation. We talked about 
uh, astro, you know, yogis going out of the bodies and giving the detail. This proves that there are two things. We and the body is different. Then what else which we discussed after that? Yes, intelligence and ego is seen in action. Similarly, soul can be felt by consciousness. Similarly, felt can, soul can be felt by consciousness. Now, then what we started? We showed you three, this diagram. Very important diagram. One was this diagram. Right? And this one. What is the most important thing in this diagram? Yeah, subtle body goes with the soul. What is destroyed at the time of death? Only our outer body is destroyed. And what is difference uh, between the gross body and the subtle body? Gross body is changing. You know, uh, and the spirit soul never changes. Spirit soul made up of what? Sat, Chit, Anand. Means it is a spiritual thing. So if it is a spiritual thing, it requires spiritual thing. By matter, soul cannot be satisfied. By matter, what will be satisfied? But are we the gross body? No. And where is the problem lying? Is it in lying in the gross body or is it lying in the soul? No, it is not lying in the gross body or not in the soul. It is lying in the mind. Where? Because the gross body is working as per the direction of mind and intelligence. And what is the false ego making you think? I am the body. I am the body. So the content, actually the mind and intelligence should be working for what? Soul. But at present stage, what is happening in our day-to-day -day life? We are using a mind and intelligence for? For a? And what we are thinking? And we'll become happy. We'll become? It is like, you know, a cage is there. And a bird is there. You are trying to clean the cage outside nicely, but forgetting the bird's requirement. Thinking the bird will automatically become happy because I have started cleaning the cage. I am decorating the cage. I am doing everything. So body is like a cage and we are inside it. So only decorating this or only ta you know trying to fulfill the gross body will never make you happy. Because we are not that. That is the first lesson of Bhagavad Gita. There are two things. Primary duty and secondary duties. It speaks about two duties. Which duty? Duty of soul and duty of gross body. Now our mind being in which state? Contaminated state. And mind and intelligence have many, many, many layers of material desire. What it has? Many layers of material desires. And because of that, mind and intelligence is trying to satisfy the gross body. And what is happening? It is working as per the instruction of the senses. What is that working? All the eyes, nose, tongue. It is trying to satisfy that. Then what will happen if it happens that way? Chariot will break. Chariot will? And it will never reach to any destination. The purpose of sitting in the chariot is lost. The purpose of getting a human life is destroyed. Intelligence has to work nicely as per the requirement of the owner, soul. Then things will, 
and he has to control he has to nicely their work is running horses work is to run freely but the intelligence has to control who has to control so similarly problem is in a mind and intelligence why because it is in a contaminated state and yesterday we discussed if something is contaminated what we have to do clean and how can we clean it yes why we should chant the mantra and the reason yes mind is powerful so something more powerful than mind is required something powerful then and we discussed about elements each element you know bhubi apo anulo vayu khammanu buddhir each element is 10 time powerful than the other element the first one previous one so similarly if you go so after sky comes mind after mind comes intelligence and after intelligence comes ego which is more powerful than what is more powerful than ego soul what is more powerful than soul the lord himself and what is more powerful than the lord name the mantra which is given in kali santaran upanishad and it is given that this many times you have to chant prescribed how many times it is given 3 and a half crore times and what was the calculation around 8 hours if you chant this name 15 years if you chant 3 hour a uh, 4 hours 30 years 2 hours 60 years 1 hour 120 years half hour 240 years 15 minutes 480 years and uh, uh, nothing then <laughs> don't worry we'll become nice animal <laughs> right because we will be doing bodily duty which duty and what is bodily duty eating sleeping mating and defending nature says not worry i'll take all your facilities what i'll take why you require human body you if if you want i will give you a nice body as per your requirement huh we stopped uh, we also discussed the different characteristic requirement of soul and requirement of body what was soul is we are eternal body is opposite that is what is body temporary body is just see it is exactly opposite what is eternal's opposite temporary then what is unborn quality for for the soul then for body it will come what it takes birth it takes at a certain time but we change the body that individual is quality for what soul but can body what is then for body it applies it can be divided then and that the famous shloka for this nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavaka necha name kledeyanti apo na shoshayati marutah it's not created not destroyed this all qualities are of soul but what are the qualities of body it can be destroyed it has to destroy and it has to change and you will be forced to act according to the body you are if you are in the child body you will react in a child way if you are in a male you know a uh, young body you will start reacting little young way if you are in an old body you will react in a oldish way if you are in a dog's body you will only bark even if you want to talk you can't talk You will bark only because you are forced to act in that way in that body. So when we are one year, two years, what we do? We cry only, cry helplessly. Even though we are the same person, but the body is different. What is that? We are helpless in that body. You can't do anything. But when the body changes to young, 
when the body changes then we react in a different, different way so in a different body jivatma reacts in a different, different way then sachidanand that is the quality of soul. soul but what is the quality of body different. just opposite asat means it is temporary achit means it is not it, the knowledge is covered and anand soul is blissful but body is a cause of worry it's always give some or other miseries to our mind size of soul yeah when you read shloka number 2.10 to 32 in that you will all get where it is mentioned tip of the hair you cut it in 10,000 times that, that tape that's why you will find soul even in bacteria even in bacteria and the same soul is there even in elephant also location in the region of heart identity of soul that we discussed what was the identity what is identity of soul no no identity mameva ansho what is it part we are part what are we soul is a part of the whole the shlok number 15.7 please remove that 15.7 shlok so you can see that what is that shlok saying 15.7 page number 629 read Prabhuji yeah yeah translation Prabhuji you read the living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts they are eternal fragmental we all are what part eternal parts and what is it happening due to conditioned life they are struggling very hard with the six senses the mind. mind then I discussed what is the function of a part yesterday I showed you an example of my hand if this hand is a part of my body what is the function of this hand to yes hand should cooperate and hand should serve that is the duty of this hand if it is not cooperating and not serving and it is a paralytic hand what is the use of this hand nothing or when the hand is detached from the whole body what is the value of that hand similarly if we being part and parcel of Lord you have to serve and cooperate and love the Lord that is the primary duty of the soul to serve and love and what is the primary duty of body eating sleeping meeting and defending so there are two duties which we have to balance in our life not only bodily duties but there is a primary duty being spirit soul the requirement is spiritual it cannot you cannot mix matter and spirit you cannot try to satisfy spirit with matter driver and car example was given that putting petrol in the car is necessary but don't think that driver I will put petrol then he will be ok <laughs> huh? for car driver or that owner I have to give different food I can't put petrol what will happen if I put petrol he will not be there <laughs> So that is less intelligence what we call as mixing both requirement there are primary duty and secondary duties in life we have to understand that very nicely loving and serving the Lord and cooperating the Lord that is the duty of soul and for that mind has to be cleaned mind has to be and that's why Mahamantra chanting is required 
like you go to a doctor doctor gives you medicine but at the medicine with medicine he gives you some uh, prescription to do and not to do right similarly lord arjuna asked in the sixth chapter the same question mind is so unstable how to control it then lord gave the answer abhyas and vairagya what he gave two things you have to do abhyas vairagya abhyas of chanting the holy name by which you can clean you can clean the mind and if we are not cleaning what are we doing for ourselves are we helping ourselves or are we creating more problem for ourselves creating more problems because an untidy thing kept if i am keeping a garbage over here if you don't want also cockroach insects flies disease will naturally get attracted to it naturally right similarly when the mind is not clean and it is in a contaminated state lust anger greed you know envy they all six enemies which we call kama krodha lobha madha moha matsarya they are naturally become a house in your your mind and in sixth chapter lord clearly says arjuna ask who is your greatest enemy who is your of living being lord says mind uncontaminated mind is the greatest enemy of the jivatma there is no other enemy greater than his uncontaminated mind contaminated mind contaminated mind sorry we have to uncontaminate contaminated mind is the greatest and what is that contamination material desires so we have to clean that and who is your greatest friend the same answer was us when the mind is cleaned when the mind is then it becomes your greatest friend so whether you want to live with your enemy or whether you want to live with your friend you have to decide so let's move forward see which verse it is given 6.6 bandhur atmana atmana tasya yen atme atana jita anatmana stu shatrutva vartate atma shatrutva for whom who has conquered the mind the mind is best friend but for whom one who has failed to do so the mind is the greatest enemy yesterday we discussed that there are three functions of mind what are the functions thinking willing and feeling whatever feeling comes whatever thinking comes whatever you know uh, willing comes it is done through mind Six point thirty-five. Lord Arjuna is asking, "O oh mighty Am San Kunte, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible through suitable practice and by detachment, abhyas and vairagya. What we call this? Abhyas. Six point thirty-five. So abhyas we have discussed is chanting of holy name." so what is vairagya what not we have to do so that it doesn't get further contaminated this are the four principles which we have to stop if we don't want to further contaminate our mind no meat eating no gambling no intoxication and no illicit sex life these are four pillars of sinful life what are they four pillars there's a very nice story in shrimad bhagavatam that how kali entered and he had not got any place so he fall down at the feet of parikshit maharaj and told your kshatriya 
if somebody comes you have to protect then uh, Parikshit Maharaj told that okay wherever gambling is going on wherever illicit sex life is going on wherever meat eating is going on or wherever intoxication is going on you can go and stay so 5000 years back Kaliuga tried to find out a place, but he was not able to find. Then the last place that was given was gold. What was given? Gold. And gold represents to greed. It forms, it represents to wherever is there, you can go and stay. So this we have to try to protect so that further contamination of mind doesn't happen. And we don't create a mind as an enemy. But more important is Abhyas. What is more important? Abhyas. What is more important? Abhyas of cleaning. And it depends upon you how you start the cleaning. Anybody has started today the cleaning? At least? We have to chant the holy name. What we have to chant? Holy name. Please. Thank you very much. So we'll start with the second session. We'll have a break also after uh, 8, 8.15, 5, 10 minutes breaks. Before the, then we'll start reading of the seven chapters. Five minutes we'll have a break afterwards. Not now. Okay. So, any questions are there for the first session? Yes, Mataji. Uh, you said that uh, abhyas is only chanting of the names. Yes. I asked you the same question. There are many, many things given by many saints and sages. Why you are taking only Nam Sankirtan as the way of creation? Okay. That we will discuss today in the topic of God. And a uh, little bit we will discuss tomorrow also. Tomorrow, that is a karma topic we are going to take. From chapter 3rd to 6th chapter. So, there are three types of karmas. Normally, people know only about good karma and bad karma. People speak about good and bad. But Bhagavad Gita says there are three ways of karmas. Good, bad and uh, akarma. That is called neutral karma or divine karma. Karma, Akarma and Vikarma. Bhagavad Gita speaks about three karmas. Karma, Akarma and Vikarma. So in that we will nicely explain. Yes. 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 Kali Santaran Upanishad, which is a part of Veda. In that there is a conversation between Naraji and Brahmaji. That Brahmaji has been asked by Naraji for the people of Kali Yuga how they can be saved. Because people are very short lived. They don't have time for doing many many things. So how in a short period they can get relieved from all the miseries. So after searching through all the scriptures he came to this conclusion. He gave this mantra. Iti Shodashuko Nam Nam Kali Kalmasha Nashanam Na Partara Anya Upaya Sarva Vede Shudrishyate. I have searched to all the Vedas three times and I am giving my conclusion that this is the conclusion the people of Kali Yuga has to take. This many times at least they should chant this mantra in their lifetime. Yes. Yes. How do you differentiate the yeah. So that uh, Ananda in 18th chapter when we will read, there are three levels of Ananda. One is ignorant Ananda way, that is called Tamasi Ananda. Then there is passionate Ananda and then there is goodness Ananda. And the soul Ananda is called as pure goodness or transcendental divine Ananda. So there are four levels of Ananda which is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita in 18th chapter. And that we will discuss in the extra classes if we are going to take. Because nature part we may, if people agree then we start, otherwise we only take three sessions. 
the fourth is the nature that is from chapter number 13 to chapter number 18 in that what is your nature and that nature will lead you to where it is discussed nicely okay so the ananda what you are talking that is coming on the gross level which level body level and because of that ananda what are the results also it's mentioned okay yeah creativity <coughs> means what creativity no birth yeah. no the actual function of the soul is eternal and the function of the soul is to cooperate and love the lord yeah Mm. Yeah. Production, production. Ha, production of the this soul are unlimited. How many? Unlimited, uncountless souls are there. Uncountless, you cannot count. And you know the human species is very small. But if you take the 84 lakh species, there are more species in water. There are more species in air, there are more species in tree form, reptile form, L lot of species are there. Unlimited species. Lord and soul is same thing. No. It is a part. It is quality wise it is one. But quantity wise it is not same. That you have to understand. Like the hand is a part of a body but the hand can be body entire body no it is a part what is it and part will be only satisfied when it is attached with the hole like you take a drop of a water in the ocean and the ocean qualitatively the drop is one it is also salty and the sea is also salty but can you say that drop is ocean or you take a fire from, you know, a big fire has happened and a spark is coming out. What is coming out? That spark has a fiery quality. But can you say that spark is the entire fire? Huh? No. So, we are part. What are we? You can become godly. What you can become? But not God. Okay, we can also say that, okay, we Ocean, we also make a lot of drops. See, you can break it into drops. No, huh? Yes, it is all drops only. No. We have to understand that the drop identity and drop cannot be termed as ocean. Please understand. You are part. It is clearly mentioned. We what are we? Satchidanand part. We are fiery qualities. We have to stick to the scriptures. What we have to stick? Mame Vansha, what is it saying? And what is the formula? There is one shloka in Ishopanishad. Om Purna Madaha, Purna Midam, Purna Purna Mudachyate, Purnasya Purna Madaya, Purna Meva Vashishyate. What is the meaning of this shloka? It says that out of one, if you minus one, still one remains. That is spiritual calculation. That is? Even if you take out entire thing from the whole of Lord, then the Lord will remain. Then the Lord will remain. 1 minus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 1. <laughs> that is spiritual calculation. Om Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevap Shishyate. If you, if you take out or even put Purnameva Avashishyate. Purna Avashishyate. Avashishyate means it remains as it is. That is spiritual calculation. Infinite. Infinite. Yes, Prabhuji? I have come across a statement by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh -huh. The Gayatri Mantra he has said is the most supreme mantra among all the things. Prabhuji, we will read today that. Okay. That we are going to read in one hour. Right. We are going to read that what you are saying with that. What else he is saying that also has to be understood. He is saying
आई एम गायत्री मंत्र आई एम दिस आई एम दिस दिस इज विभूति योग वॉट इज इट ई सेंग दिस इज जस्ट माई स्पाक वॉट इज इट से no that's why no so that's why we will read nicely today we are going to read 7 chapter 8 chapter 9 chapter 10 chapter okay. and this and then we'll come to the conclusion okay. huh there are many many things said in with that chapter right. then we have to understand all things properly and uh, so let us start with today's topic next topic is ishwara yesterday we discussed about jiva today ishwara and today please write it down what are we going to discuss first thing that we are going to discuss is proof of god is there god or not proof of god second definition of god third ways different ways of knowing god why there are different different religions and different different instructions and why uh we accept vedas as the highest praman why we accept vedas as the highest authorities in praman and then after completing all these things we will start reading bhagavad gita from chapter number 7 to chapter number 11 after this all these things so around 8 8 15 8 8 we'll start reading so one one in a 1.1 uh, hour we'll be discussing all these things and then we'll do the reading part okay so now let us discuss the proof of god first this was a devotee who was shaving his hair in the barber shop and as usual there are many people who complained about many things which are going wrong in the society and he was blaming are bhagwan hai nahi you know this is it happens you know all bogus and everything and complaining complaining and this person got fed up listening of all the complaints so he went out and started shouting there are no barbers there are no barbers there are no barbers and i can prove that there are no barbers are he is shouting is my dhande ka time hai why you are doing this and why you are shouting you just shave your head and came out and how can you say that you can prove that there are no barbers i can prove there are no barbers so how can you say so you see many people on the road they are having long long hairs they are having mustaches they are having beard see this person is having beard so this proves that there is no barber hai eh? how can you prove there no barber and they have to come to me na then i will shave how can you say this so he said we have to go to god what we have to do we have to go to him then things will get cleared so you all are fortunate at least here trying to understand something what is called as bhagavad gita as i told you in this 3 days we are only showing you outer trailer some little little bit of some topics we are trying to explain nothing more in this 3 days so somebody read this mata ji hmm the legendary wimbledon player was dying of cancer from world over he received letters from his fans one of which conveyed 
Why does God have to select you for such a bad business? To this Arthur Ashe replied, the world, the world over, 5 crore children start playing tennis. 50 lakh learn to play tennis. 5 lakh learn professional tennis. 50,000 come to the circuit. 5,000 uh, 5, reach the Grand Slam. 50 reach Wimbledon. 4 to semi-final. 2 to the finals. When I was holding the cup, I never asked God, why me? And today in pain, I should not be asking God, why me? This is what happens generally with everybody. When we are in happiness, we do not give the credit. Lord, you have given us so much things, there are so many good things happening. But when there is a problem, immediately, why I am suffering God? Huh? Why it is happening with me? Why other person is so happy? Right? And we start comparing. But there are many, many other things which Lord has already given us. And we do not credit that to God. Now, the topic is proof of God, right? Is God there or not? So we'll start with it. What is this? What is it? Painting? Yeah. Is there a painter or it has come like this? What is the painter's name? Very nice. Everybody is intelligent. Okay. So if painting is there, the painting itself is a proof for the painter. Painting is the proof for the painter. Please understand this thing. What is this? This is also a painting, landscape, but by other painter. And who is that name? God. David Koppen. Okay. Now two painting we have shown. There is has to be a painter. Now, what is this? Natural painting. What is it? Who has made this? Somebody has to make. Yes. It can't come like this. Even if a small painting is required to have a painter, so, so much nice variety if somebody is making, there has to be a creator. So, if there is a creation, we call this as a creation, there has to be a creator. The creation itself is the proof for the creator creator. These are artificial flowers, right? Has somebody made this? If artificial flowers also required by somebody, then what to speak about natural flowers with the smell inside? They are not without smell. They don't, <laughs> you have to put perfumes. <laughs> Then also that smell is not there. But natural flowers with the smell, it proves that there is somebody who is creating it, making it. There, somebody has made this, definitely. Proof of God's existence by intelligent design. For every design, there has to be a designer. If you take this satellite, to control this satellite and design this satellite and to maintain this satellite, there is a very big structure behind it. You see, a controlling room is there for that one small satellite. But you will see so many satellites in the space roaming very nicely. Ever, ever you heard that uh, the orbit, you know, Earth is floating. What is it? Please understand. And it never, you know, comes out of its orbit. It is not that all orbits are any time clashing. And the speed is very nicely controlled. And that's why you will see everything is floating. How come the Earth is floating in the space? Who is making it float? 
we are on the land that's why we are okay but the earth is floating who is making it perfect design you know the rotation everything the astronomy astrology totally depends on the rotation and you know they can start predicting very nicely what is going to happen when because of the sequence it's very nicely designed we see an order and systematic arrangement in the universe huh one time sir isaac newton comment this way why he had comment uh anybody read somebody read what is it written this most beautiful system of the sun planets and comets could only proceed from the uh, counsel and domination of an intelligent and powerful being from an intelligent and a powerful, powerful being he should be a very intelligent and a powerful. powerful person otherwise so they were not agreeing to this statement many people then he did an model of solar system in his house very nice model he created and he invited many friends of him and he told uh, everybody was asking who helped you very nice model and uh, very nicely you have designed it who helped you he says nobody helped me it came just like this what he told if you say that the solar system came just like that so why can't uh, my solar system <laughs> come just like that my small set can also come this like that if that big can come just like that and there is no require of any intelligence or powerful then what is the it also came like that only by chance what then the people started understanding that he is making some point what is making it can't come just like that there is some specific design and somebody who has made it very nicely we see there is an amazing order uh, automatic structure rna dna and you know very nicely everything is designed if when you take a nucleus small nucleus it's like a city even if you take a small there is a center centrus nucleus there is a protection wall no element other element can enter it nor uh, there is a protection system who has designed these things somebody has designed it very nicely even to the smallest part that has to be a perfect designer there has to be a we see laws there are laws biological law chemical law physical law mechanical law when we say law there has to be somebody who has made the law there has to be who has made the law then who is he somebody has made the law we see the gravitational law very perfect you know that gravitational law on earth some 9999 point imagine tomorrow that the gravitational law doesn't work properly what will happen we'll yeah we will be flying in the uh, heads up <laughs> but ever that had happened not happened so somebody is maintaining that law very nicely very nicely who is it we speak about biology law right we sp speak about physics law but where is that law maker we fail to understand that and we say no no it's just by chance the law have came what just by chance
prescribed laws of mathematical accuracy governing this world. Law means there has to be a law maker. And that is a proof of God. Okay? Now, definition of God. Yes, Prabhuji? See, what has happened, there are three ways of acquiring knowledge, normal way, which we will be discussing. One is called as Pratyaksha Praman, other is called as Anuman Praman, and other is called Shabda Praman. Mostly, the science believes in Pratyaksha Praman and Anuman Praman. Which Praman? Seeing and assumption. What it believes in? Plus, Bhagavad Gita clearly says, we will also discuss that, the ways, you know, what is the ways of knowing God in that. We will come after this topic. So, you will clearly understand which category of science they fall in. Okay? Definition of God. Now, which will, uh, proof of God is discussed. Now, Definition of God. Because when we say God, many people have many confusion about it. Many, many. And many people start thinking according to their understanding that this is God. But scriptures say God definition. This is one of the definitions. This is, but there are many other definitions. The first definition is that he is the cause of all causes. Please write it down. He is the cause of all causes and there is no other cause of himself. Second definition. He is the supreme controller of each and everything what is happening in this universe. Supreme controller. First is that he is the cause of all the causes. But for him, there is no cause. Nobody can say that he is the cause of that person. Second, he is the supreme controller of each and everything. Third, he is the supreme uh, proprietor of each and everything in this universe. And the last, he is the supreme enjoyer. Then, this definition is given in Vishnu Puran 6.5.47. You know the Bhagavan, you know, Van, like we say, Gyanavan, Sondaryavan, Dhanvan. What is the meaning of Dhanvan? Who possesses a lot of wealth. Sondaryavan means what? Beauty. What is the meaning of Balavan? Strength. What is the beauty of Gyanavan? knowledge. What is the meaning of Vairagyavan? Renunciation. So, one, like when all ones are compared, combined in one, then it becomes Bhaga. What it becomes? Bhaga Vana. So, in Vishnu Puran it said, full wealth means Dhanavan. Then strength, full strength. It is written full, complete. Means that is? Balavan. Then, full fame means nobody is more, you know, famous than him. Then, beauty means Sondaryavan. Then, knowledge, Gyanavan. And, Vairagya. When all the six one come, are in complete full, not even one percent less, how much? Because somebody may have wealth, but he may not have strength, beauty, fame. Somebody may have fame, but he may not have knowledge, renunciation and this. All six 
हंड्रेड परसेंट कंबाइन देन दैट पर्सन फिट्स टू बिकम अ भगवान नाउ इफ वी से भगवान देन हाउ वी विल नो हु इज भगवान देन द क्वेश्चन अराइजेज ऑफ नॉलेज क्वेश्चन अराइजेज ऑफ नॉलेज सो स्क्रिप्चर सेज देर आर थ्री वेज ऑफ एक्वायरिंग नॉलेज फर्स्ट राइट इट डाउन प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण सेकेंड इज अनुमान प्रमाण दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अजम्पन अनुमान मीन्स अजम्पन प्रत्यक्ष मीन्स बाय सीइंग एंड द लास्ट इज शब्द प्रमाण भागवत गीता एंड भागवतम स्क्रिप्चर से ह्यूमन बींग्स inherently all human beings are not perfect they are not do you believe with this statement and scripture says inherently they have why they are not perfect for that they have given four reasons they have given four reasons or four defects that is why they are not perfect the first reason is that every human being the sense is power what he has sensing power like seeing power listening power smelling power speaking power thinking power is limited what is it limited it cannot say i can uh, my i am perfect in all these things my power of senses are complete like if you see seeing power we cannot see beyond certain range can we see beyond range or can we hear certain ray, uh, that Uh, frequencies can be no even while seeing also uh, we may have many uh, problems in understanding so our senses are limited what are we and that limitation may vary from person to person somebody may be very high very good somebody may be very dull but tomorrow this person may be more powerful than this person so it varies from person to person first defect senses are limited second ha huh. second every person commits mistakes in his life he cannot say i have not committed any mistake is it right yes, yes. third every person can fall into illusion or attraction illusion and attraction we can attract it to many worldly things and we fall in illusion and the last we illusion and attraction we get attracted to many many things in this world and because of that we commit cheating there is a cheating propensity in human beings what is that so this are four basic defects which scripture says that every human being has which is the first defect our senses are limited thinking power reasoning power everything it can vary from person to person second they be a bound to commit some or other mistake in our life third yeah we can fall a prey for attractions whatever it may be according to the senses or we can get illusion we can't say that we are we cannot get illusion in my life we do not get attraction for anything in our life and the last cheating and the biggest cheating is that scripture says even if you are soul what a what do you think i am this body so there the basic problem starts you we are cheating ourselves we are being soul we are thinking ourselves to be a body and trying to satisfy the body. body which is not going to happen and hundreds of life you try you are not going to able to satisfy this body 
Even if you old, ask an old person who has, you know, just, are your all wishes completed? What do you say? I can get little more time, then I will tell you. <laughs> Is he happy now, after living so much life? No. He can't be. Because what he is trying to satisfy? What he is not. <laughs> huh? Okay. So this primary are considered four defects. That's why the first two pramans, which is called as Anuman Praman and Pratyaksha Praman, they fall in these two categories. Which category? Bodily categories. Human categories. What is Pratyaksha Praman? Like if there is a smoke coming out, we say that there is a fire. That is called Pratyaksha Pranam. But when you go over there, you may see that the fire is already extinguished. After that, the smoke is coming. So your guesswork, wrong. Sometimes you see a shining thing on the road. You may think it is diamond. But when you go over there, it may be a glass or an ugly diamond. <laughs> so you cannot be perfect. You cannot perfectly rely and say whatever I am seeing is right. You can't say 100% rely on whatever you see is perfect. So there is a limitation to such type of praman. You cannot say that this is 100% Sure. And that's why science rely on this type of Pramad. Which Pramad? And Anuman Pramad. What is Anuman Pramad? It is called as guesswork. Today rain is happening, then this will happen, this will happen. According to the past, we are giving this assumption, it may happen. But it may not happen also. And the famous assumption, um, you know, in the childhood we have given about an elephant standing and four, five blind person are there and they are guessing how the elephant is. Huh? One is catching, what they is catching? Ear. What is another catching? Leg. Then tail. Then tusk. And the body. And everybody is giving their way of assumption what is elephant like. And what they say? Elephant is like snake. Elephant is like pillar. Elephant is like fan, elephant is like wall, and elephant is like rope. Now, is they are right or wrong? They are totally right and completely wrong. They no no they are totally right according to their assumption, but actually wrong. So assumption may sometimes go very wrong. You on that also you can't rely 100%. One time there was a seminar of orthopedic doctors, very nice doctors. And in orthopedic doctors, you know, when they speak the language, it's very high. Even if you go and they write something, you know, to understand what he has written, this words and it goes above head sometimes. So then the seminars were going on, going on, going on, and uh, there was a break. And everybody was trying to speak very high, you know. And in the break, uh, they were speaking and discussion was going on. And immediately one person was limping from far and he was coming like this. And immediately as a doctor, they started finding out what may be the fault in that person's limping. So they started their language, you know, the ligament, this thing, that thing, the tear and this, this, this. And a lot of discussion was going on what it may be. Then they tried to call that person. Let us call that person and examine actually what is the problem. Huh? So they called him that person. He came limping. And he said, why you are limping? Let's, let us show me why you are limping. Said, I'm not limping. My chappal is broken. <laughs> That's why I'm just pulling. <laughs> so assumption can go wrong. And assumption uh, cannot be 100% way of Knowing. That's why you see, when atom was discovered, what was discovered? 
40 years or 50 years back, whenever, they told atom is the smallest particle that time. There was no proton, neutron or something like that. But later they told, no, 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 atom is not the smallest particle. It is proton, neutron. So person who thought that atom was the smallest particle and died, for him that's, that's the, that was the end of the science. <laughs> so why there is a change? Because they believe in these two types of praman. Which praman? Anuman Praman and Pratyaksh Praman and every person has a limitation. What it has? So what happens? There is always, you know, change. Because it is not perfect. It is not complete. Because they themselves are incomplete. And the ways they are trying to adopt is also incomplete. Now recently, after that, which is the particle? God particle, boson particle, this is a smaller than atom, there is sub-particle. So now the entire science has to be rearranged. So the person who was thinking in that way his entire life, now he has to start thinking, no, 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 my theory that was not now, I have to think that there is a sub-particle also. <laughs> so why, what I am trying to say, when you rely on bodily concept. Which concept? And on Pratyaksha Praman, Anuman Praman, there is definitely the answer will not be perfect. Because there are limitations. There are? And there will be changing happening. So, if we want to know about God, according to this way, do we will get a perfect answer? No. Then, scriptures give a very small example of knowing God. If Prabhuji, you or I want to know about my father, there are two ways. Simple way of knowing my um, father is I should approach my mother. Mother, I have complete faith in you. Please tell me who is my father. Second approach. That is called Pratyaksh Praman and Anuman Praman, according to that. Mother, I don't have faith in you. I believe in science. I believe in? Science. So, I want to now take DNA test. And want to find out my father. I don't know who is my father. So, what he has to do now? How many DNA tests he has to take? And from where he has to start the DNA test? First the family members, then the society people, then the area people, <laughs> then where he has to go? Village. Ah, the entire village, <laughs> then Bombay city, <laughs> then Maharashtra, then India, and then 171 countries are there. Every one DNA test he will take, then he will come to a conclusion whether who is my real father. How long is the process? Is it pra 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 practical? Huh? <coughs> to know your simple father, you have to believe in your mother. You have to? You cannot rely on that process which is unending. Because you have to take the test of everybody now. Because unless until everybody test doesn't come, then it doesn't match, then, then only I'll say can prove, na? Who is my? Because I don't believe her. I? I don't believe. I believe this way. Which way? Yeah. Scientific way. So I will go through that way only and try to find out. Who is my real? Because to learn then every one's person DNA you have to take, na? How, how fantastic method. <laughs> that is called as unending way of finding out the father. And ultimately, when you go on that path, you will be more confused. What you will be? More confused. It's better go approach and have some faith in your 
mother. That is the only option. You can't go any other way, otherwise you will not find the answer at all. So scripture says, if you want to know your father also, you should have faith in your mother. So what to speak about the supreme father? If you want to know about supreme father, you have to have faith in the Vedic mother. Vedas are like mother. What are they? Scriptures are like? And that is called as Shabda Praman. What is it called as? And the Shabda Praman Vedas. How many Vedas are there? Anybody can know? Four. Which are the four Vedas? Samaved, Yajurved, Atharaved, Rigaved. In Atharaveda itself, it is said there is a fifth Veda. Which is the fifth Veda? Fifth Veda are com com compiled of Itihas and Puran. There are two Itihasas which are considered as Pancham Veda Ramayan and Mahabharata. And Puranas. How many Puranas are there? 18. 18 Puranas. So all these are called as supplementary Vedas. What are they called as? Vedas. So in all there are five Vedas. And the essence of all the Vedas is given in what? Bhagavad Gita. If you try to go to all the Vedas, it will take lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of shlokas and it's very difficult to understand. For that purpose, it was simplified in 700 verses. It was. And that's why Bhagavad Gita is termed as Gita Upanishada. What is it known as? Because it is a part of Mahabharata. And Mahabharat is a supplement Veda. What is it? <coughs> Pancham Veda. So, if we want, and why Vedas? Because up to now, whatever has been said in Vedas have never been proved wrong. You know the Bhugol word comes from Vedic word. Columbus had gone and then he told that no earth is not flat. What is it? Round. But Vedic literature says that Bhu is goal. Bhu goal. Kha goal or Bhu goal. What is the meaning of that? It is round. But they came to know after Columbus. <laughs> but our Vedic scriptures said very far previously only. In Kali Yuga, how people will behave, very nicely perfectly told. What is going to happen, how the people will behave and what are the people going to suffer. Everything perfectly mentioned. The Kali Yuga is last, going to last for 4 lakhs 32,000 years. How many years? Only 5,000 years have passed. 4,28,000 years are still to wait to come of Kali Yuga. Only 1% of Kali Yuga is gone. How much? And so much deterioration is there. You know, Bhagavatam is a part of Veda. There is a one conversation between Devuhuti Mata and uh, Kapila Bhagavan, where how a child goes in the womb of a mother and from the first night how it progresses in the womb of a mother. It's very scientifically given in it. What happens on the seventh day? What happens on the uh, one month, second month, third month? Very nicely detailed given in Bhagavatam. And even the science people try to match it out and they saw it is perfectly matching. How, how much far they have given this thing? 5000 years back. The Vedas further go that what is the child thinking? It is also saying that. What is the child? Thinking. thinking. That is also mentioned in it. 
how it behaves and what it thinks when he is inside the womb. That perfect are the Vedic literatures. Vedic literatures say about stool, you know, stool is impure. But you take cow stool, cow urine, it is pure. What it says? It is pure. It is not impure. Not a single word. You take Bhavishya Purana. Which Purana? Out of it, Bhavishya Purana. It speaks about Ishu Mashi. The word that is used for Christ is Ishu. What is the word? Ishu. Where he will be coming? What is the purpose? For which type of people he will give the message? Shepherd people. Muhammad Pegambar. How he is going to come? For what period? And how he is going to do? Even if you take Bhagavatam. In Bhagavatam only in the first canto, you will read the Suchi where Lord Buddha will appear. Who will be his mother? Where will be the Kalki avatar at the end of 4 lakh 32 years? thousand where it is going to appear which is the place who will be the mother everything is perfectly good what to speak how the people will behave in Kaliuga let us read something which amazing predictions are given you know please pass it on to everybody little bit why Vedas are perfect Because if you want to know Lord, you have to go to a perfect source. What do you have to read? Perfect source. You cannot rely on limitation sources. Like Father, you cannot go on DNA testing. See here, when you practice, there is anything, then experiment is there, then what, you know, in science, then conclusion is there. Similarly, when you practice this, you know, the experience, theory, experience, and then conclusion result is given in any science. So, similarly, when you practice over here, that Anubhava comes, and then the conclusion comes, results comes. And what we are doing is already practiced by the previous people. It is not something concoctional like in the Pratyak Praman or Anubhav Praman. You try to do according to your concoction. But here, whatever it is given in the scriptures. And where does the scriptures come? It comes directly from the Lord. Scriptures come directly from the Lord. Now, what is the difference between Lord and human being? Lord is perfect. Lord doesn't have cheating propensity. Lord cannot fall under illusion or attraction. Otherwise, he is not Lord. And Lord's senses cannot be imperfect like us. Otherwise, why he can be Lord? Then he is not Lord if he is imperfect. So, when we say that the scriptures are coming from the Lord, the Lord is perfect, so the scriptures are also. So, how perfect are they? That's why we are reading. Now, read this prediction, first prediction. Religion, truthfulness, cleanliness, tolerance, mercy, duration of life, physical strength and memory will all diminish day by day because of the powerful influence of the age of Kali. I will tell you one example of physical strength, how it is true. You know uh, Prithviraj Chauhan? His uh, armor is still there in Mysore and all that places. And one Mughal Azam picture had to be made. What? Mughal Azam. And Prithvi, you know, the Prithvi Raj Chauhan, uh, that he wanted to actually wear that armor during the fighting scene. So they decided to take that armor. What happened when that armor was put? He was not able to get up only <laughs> because it was 300 kg. How much? Imagine and you know the sword that he used to carry was of 80 kilo. How many kilo? <laughs> so people that time was so strong that they were able to you know with one hand pick up that 80 kilo 
how how far you will pick up or we will pick up the dirty kilo that in give you gas cylinder <laughs> so that is the power you know relation memory previously people's mind used to be like computers you know now everything is inside the computer calculations people used to do calculations you know by in mind now without computer even in a small calculation we can't do <laughs> nobody is interested so you know memory power every day a memory power is decreasing every day so whatever it is been said it is proved this is said 5000 years back how much it's in 12th canto this thing in bhagavatam just to prove that how perfect vedas are vedas cannot be wrong please read the second prediction prabhu ji you read second prediction in kali yuga wealth alone will be considered the sign of a man's good birth, birth proper behavior and fine qualities and law and justice will be applied only on the basis of one's power source shrimad bhagavatam yeah is it right or wrong how far it was said when that was not considered wealth was never actually the quality of the persons were considered as a real wealth tapasya austerity was considered as his real wealth morality is were considered but today if nobody has no wealth he is impious person what is he if he has money whatever is very good third prediction prabhu men and women will live together merely because of superficial attraction and success in business will depend on deceit womanliness and manliness will be judged according to one's expertise in sex and a man will be known as a brahmin and a brahman just by his daring attraction they will live together only by attraction and that was not the reason in the previous people previous yugas you know very high standards were there for attraction bodily attraction was the secondary thing primary attraction was the quality of that person and nowadays it is said by the words the marriage happens what happens it was not like that in the previous time so things will get deteriorating people will become more animalistic by this prediction what it is going to say the people are going to become more animalistic read the fourth prediction prabhu ji a person person spiritual position will be ascertained merely according to external symbols and on that same basis people will change from one spiritual order to the next the person's propriety will be seriously questioned if he does this an on good living and one who is very clever at juggling words he will be termed as learned scholar if you can you know <laughs> very nice words are very nice he is very nice <laughs> fifth prediction prabhu ji you are a bad person why because you don't have money <laughs> and democracy will be accepted as virtue yes you have to be little bit smart in cheating and everything in today's world <laughs> marriage will be arranged simply by verbal agreement yes kabool kabool yes finish arrange i accept you you accept me and after one year divorce <laughs> Yeah, if he is a little bit bad, then nicely he can go and stand in the public. Hmm? Marriage is nowadays it's real. If the girl says yes, boy says yes, yes, go, go, go. Never match the uh, past life karmas, spiritual things, huh? Anything, but it's go. And that's why we will learn tomorrow about that karma things, how it works, uh, animalistic level, then little uh, uh, sakam karma. 
then uh, nishkam karma you will learn very nicely which are the grades of different different karmas read a sacred place Yes, if your hairstyle is very nice, you are more beautiful. Filling the belly will become Yes, eating, sleeping and mating is the goal of life. And one who is audacious will be accepted as truthful. Yes. He who can maintain a family will be regarded as an expert. If you maintain your, at least your children and wife very nicely, you are very good. <laughs> Of reputation. Seventh, as the earth become crowded, any of the social classes shows himself to be the strongest within politics. Is it right? Those who are powerful try to control political power. Eighth prediction, Madhaji, read behind. Yeah, yeah. Harassed by famine, excessive taxes. Yes, so in Kalyuga there will be more famine and excessive taxes system. Madhaji, read. Yes. Okay. So, ten prediction, Mataji. Please read somebody from here. From here, Prabhuji, you read. The maximum duration of life for human beings will be fifty years. And it is said by the end, his size will be going down. What it will be? It will become more, more. Huh? The flat size area will become little less. <laughs> huh? Man will no longer protect the elderly parents. Yes. In Kali Yuga? Man will develop a hatred for each other even over. Spew coins. Giving up all candy wishes, they will be ready to lose their own lives and share their own relatives. So there are many many such things which are given. We will read one further. Not a single prediction is proved wrong. And what they have given it? How much? 5000 years back. That is the perfectness of the scriptures. Never ever ever been proved wrong. Then we have now another thing. Why we come to Bhagavad Gita? If we want to know Lord, we have to come to Vedas and Vedas essence is given in Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is written by whom? Ganesh Ji. So whatever single word it is given, it is tested and edited and written. So we have three options to know God. Either by Pratyaksha Praman, either by Anuman Praman, or either by so which is the perfect way of knowing Lord Shabda Prabha so and we will wind up in five minutes why there are different different scriptures why only Bhagavad Gita why uh, there is Quran there is Bible there is many other scriptures why not refer that also so before understanding this let us, I'll understand few principles. Every religion is speaking the same thing. There are two things. One is principle and other is detail. Write it down. Principle and detail. Like a person who is a doctor very mature doctor one 10 standard students comes to him he has an exam on digestion 
biology and subject matter he wants to understand from that doctor so now doctor speaks in a very simple manner that you take food there is the digestive system it goes over here the stomach is there liver is there this function is there and then through intestine it passes waste and goes down in a simple way he will try to explain the 10th standard student now a mbbs doctor who is practicing in the college his exam is there he comes to understand the digestive system to the same doctor now what way he will explain to him will it be the same level that he had explained to the 10th student or it will be little higher version much higher, much higher version he will be speaking in a very high language and a high way and many many things which are can be understood by him only by not that imagine a surgeon who is operating on the stomach and there is an operation theater and he is calling the surgeon surgeon i have operated now this intestine i am having this problem now if that doctor goes over there what is he going to say over there it will be something very different from what he has told to the 10th standard student and to the mbs now one doctor the same thing but he is giving three instruction to three different people is it he giving right or wrong according to the level and the need he is giving the instruction to that person so instruction varies according to the level according to the level it cannot be the same for everybody he cannot operate to the 10th standard the same now we have two types of dictionaries you know one is called as pocket dictionary oxford pocket dictionary and one is encyclopedia dictionary you take a word and you take in the dictionary you will find one line answer but you take the same word in that encyclopedia one whole page what you will find whole page for the same word is company doing cheating with you why there it is given for reference there it is given for and here it is given in detail here that word is given in detail when gandhi ji started leave india quick india movement and swadeshi movement he started what swadeshi there were main two principles what was the principle in starting that swadeshi self reliance and simplicity india should become self reliant because britishers were taking the goods from here giving the labor over there and bringing the same product over here and trying to sell at a high price so he told that self reliance is the principle simplicity simplicity where our own khadi where are we will make and we'll make our own khadi we don't want all these things because two principles are there india should become self reliance and you should live a simple life but in any society there are two types of followers one is called as fanatic follower what do we call as and one is the follower of principles what is a fanatic follower when gandhi told that we should wear khadi so that fanatic follower like today's people they will say that politicians we have to wear khadi so we'll import khadi what we'll do we will because gandhi has told khadi we should wear khadi politicians should wear khadi so we'll import khadi and other person who is a indian who is a living a simple life he has a pant and shirt made of indian companies and very simple some sets are there in his house now who is actually following gandhi who is following the principally who is following the gandhi no that he is following gandhi in a fanatic way what i am trying to say there are fanatic followers and followers of 
principle fanatic follower will try to mold the things according but when you understand the principle behind him you have understood the meaning rightly fanat is similarly in religions all religions speak the same thing whether it is quran whether it is bible or whether it is you know gita it is saying lord is one it is saying never indulge yourself in sense gratification it is saying that you should take the holy name in, in hindus we have mala in uh, catholics they have rosaries and in uh, muslims they have tarwees tawees muslim says la ilahi nobody is greater than him in bhagavad gita it says matta pratram nanyat nobody is greater than me in uh, bible it says love me love thy you should love everybody like others in bhagavad gita uh, in uh, bible it is said creation happened in 7 days creation happened in but how the creation is very nicely happened it is mentioned in bhagavatam in detail like education system government is one indian government but how many boards we have in india ssc board icsc board cbsc board igc ha huh? many boards are there but you have ever visited palmguru hotel anybody has seen on the jew beach palmguru hotel is there yes. and opposite palmguru hotel there is dilkush high school which high school dilkush. what is the speciality of that school slow learners. slow learners and mental retarded people that school is for them ha huh? yeah so there also they are taking education they are also they are taking education but the education level for them is different now mata ji if icic igcb is the best education why not everybody put in that category why different different level of education systems are there different on the level no according to the person's capacity like for that persons who is a slow learner for that that type of teaching has to be given you cannot put the highest teaching directly on him if he is a mental he is the right because he is a slow learner he doesn't have the right or what he has a right so similarly different level of people different instructions have to be given like we say according to the animal stick propensity then that type of instruction have to be given like if somebody comes at my door at the temple he is a beggar he is uncleaned should i start bombarding this bhagavad gita philosophy to him you are not body you are soul <laughs> like kya hai bhai the simple thing i have to tell him i don't have to tell him more philosophy i have to simply say please speak clean first what i have to say if you want to enter be clean this is the basic instruction i'll give to him if he is ready to follow that instruction properly then i will see that other instructions are given like jesus himself told that i am the son of god what he told he never told that i am god mohammed peygamber sahab said la ilaha illa lord is one but never told that he is god so the question arises then who is god huh? that's why we have to refer to the ultimate vedas what we have to refer to ultimate vedic literature and as per the level like in quran it is said that you cannot have sex with your mother you cannot have sex with your mother for a normal person like us we can't even think of it 
but over there the instructions have to be given because they ma marry so many women that ultimately when the person is old the child first wife second wife third wife fourth wife fourth wife fifth wife you know the last wife is 18 years and the person is 90 years and he has son of 30 40 years so then the instructions have to be given according to the place and circumstances Jesus himself told that this instruction I'm this was for the shepherd shepherd class people which class they were all shepherd class I wanted to tell you more I want to tell you but according what you can understand I'm giving so similarly according to the level why in, why we have so many Puranas also because the level of the person every level is not same you cannot put everybody in the same level and stick that this is the instruction you have to follow for different level of people different message has to be given and if he adopts nicely then he can go further that's why as in Kali Yuga, people are more materialistic. People are more interested in bodily level talks. Which talks? They are not at all interested in spiritual things. Soul topic. Then at least to regulate their body life. Which life? How to become at least, you know, nicely. That has to be told. As for that person, I cannot start bombarding philosophies. I have to first tell him the basic principle become clean. Become clean. Similarly, people are interested in meat eating, uh, gambling, intoxication, illicit sex life. So then those who are in that, then that level of instruction has to be given to them. How at least they can come out of it. So different, different categories of people are to be given different detail instruction. But principle is one. Principle is God is one. You have to surrender to God. You have to love him. Serve him. You have to serve him. And the highest knowledge is given in Vedas. What is it given? That is the eternal highest knowledge. But everybody cannot understand that level. Even if we try, that's why little bit summarized has been given in Bhagavad Gita. And that's why we will start reading from 7th chapter to 12th chapter to understand the God topic.